How's it going everyone, College Lucky, and in this video I have for you guys some of the best players to use on Hall of Fame difficulty or in the championship series and above. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is pitchers, and the number one thing I look for is hits and Ks per nine. I think this attribute is most important when it comes to pitching in this game. I think shrinking your opponent's PCI is the most important thing. Uh, the number two thing I look for in uh, MLB The Show 19 is stamina the pitcher stamina is pretty important you want your starting pitcher to go deep into the game because the bullpen in this year's game is a little bit more thin so far uh, the third thing is home runs per nine that actually has an effect in this year's game it determines how often the opponent or you give up a home run to the opponent the fourth thing is walks per nine and control and then the fifth thing is break the signature series pitchers in this game excel in all five of those categories so if you can fill your rotation with those guys you'll be set i think uh, clayton kershaw is a must have in this year's game he has the stamina the hits and case per nine he has all, really all five things that i mentioned uh, in the previous slide i mean his control is amazing 92 and 88 his velocity is at 90 i don't really look at that too too much because i just look at the fastball speed uh, nolan ryan is another guy that has excel, excels really in four of those categories his control and his walks per nine really aren't that great but uh, he will be able to locate for you on Hall of Fame. He's a little bit tougher to use on Legend difficulty, but nonetheless, one of the best pitchers, probably the, the second best pitcher in this game, if you ask me. I've used him a few times. Uh, the Zach Granke, I want to put at the top of the list as well. I've used this card a couple times, and he excels in all five categories. Uh, he does have, I mean, very effective pitches. He has 87 velocity, even though he does have that slow curveball. So if you can get this guy, I know he's very expensive. I will have some budget cards in later on in this video as well. Madison Bumgarner is a, is a cheaper signature series pitcher. He's the cheapest one off the market, but definitely effective. He has 84 home runs per nine. That's his lowest attribute as well as velocity. But uh, he does throw 95 miles an hour, so he does get it up there every now and then. But consistently at 91, 92. This Burt Blylevin is amazing. He does throw uh, two different curveballs. One's a little bit slower than the other one, which does make him effective. He also has the changeup. I've never used this card, but I have faced him, and he's very good on the harder difficulties, especially legend difficulty. Um, I, I figured they'll come out with a few other signature series cards, but to go into some budget players, this Roy Oswalt was very good for me. He does have good stamina. His hits per nine is a little bit low. Does have 91 Ks per nine, which is really good. Good control and good walks per nine. His home runs per nine is pretty low, and that's... The same thing with this uh, Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is probably the best live series pitcher in the game. But uh, like like Roy Oswald, he does have low home runs per nine. That's going to be the one thing that does come back to bite you on the uh, Hall of Fame difficulty. You might give up a few more home runs than with some of these other guys. Uh, Chris Sale is in the same category. He does have good stamina at 97. Hits per nine at 79. Just recently got an upgrade in his case per nine, I'm pretty sure. Back up to 92. Uh, does have really good control i know a lot of top players use this card but the home runs per nine is the reason why i won't use that card i noticed that uh if you hang a pitch and i i hang a lot of pitches over the middle of the plate and those balls will be sent out for sure noah Syndergaard is more of a balanced pitcher he uh, doesn't really have as much stamina as some of the other guys but definitely pretty good all around 70 hits per nine is kind of low uh one gold pitcher that i was using that's a really good budget gold pitcher is aj burnett this card has uh, only four pitches, but they are pretty good. He does have a knuckle curve and a changeup to go along with the hard sinker. The sinker is a very effective pitch in this game. does get on you pretty good. Uh, another budget pitcher is Blake Snell with 84 stamina, 80, which is pretty low, but 86 hits per nine, 87 Ks per nine. This card recently went diamond. He does have lower uh, walks per nine and control, but 70 home runs per nine is not the, not the worst. Another really good pitcher that kind of carried me into World Series this month was Hal Newhauser. I recently replaced him with Zach Granke, but this card is definitely pretty good. If Cy Young does not pitch well for me, I will be going back to this card until I get Justin Verlander. He is one card that I left out of this video because he's more of a new pitcher. I haven't really used him yet. But this gold Hal Newhauser is a really good second option if you don't want to grind out the Tigers of Team Affinity or uh, complete those exchanges. The gold one is very good that you can get from completing Conquest. Juan Marichal is a pitcher that I didn't really pitch very well with on Hall of Fame. He's more of a control pitcher, which I wasn't really getting the best feedback with, but he is uh, not bad if you if you need a budget guy, the Giants team affinity. Tom Seaver is a special edition diamond, also pretty good. I wanted to include him in this video. I haven't really used him, but I have faced him and he is pretty good. I know some top players that use him. 
Johnny Venters is uh, the first reliever that I'm going to talk about. He is an essential pickup to have as a lefty reliever in this game. Uh, the home runs per nine at 95, the good clutch, the good hits and case per nine. And the same thing here with this Raleigh Fingers, except he's a little bit more of a balanced card. He does have a little bit more control, and he does throw the fork ball, which is a very nice pitch. He also throws a hard sinker. Uh, also, 97 clutch is very important late in the game when you're trying to close a game out. And he also has 33 stamina. Same type of thing with this Goose Gossage. Has a little bit different of a pitch selection with that slurve. He also has those elite hits and Ks per nine at 119 to go along with that changeup. So definitely an effective pitcher. Blake Trinan is another guy, a little bit more of a budget pitcher that does throw really hard, but he normally plays up on inside edge and also throws a really hard sinker. If his slider was a little bit slower, he'd be a little bit more effective. But another good pitcher to have is Roberto Osuna. He also plays up on inside edge, throws a nice slurve, throws five pitches out of the bullpen, and uh, overall very balanced pitcher. Another good guy is uh, Araldus Chapman. He's very effective on the harder difficulties with the increased pitch speeds. He is a little bit wild and uh, throws a pretty hard changeup. So he does also throw pretty pretty hard. His pitch speed differential isn't there, but a guy that if you don't have Araldus Chapman, you can get Felipe Vasquez. That's the guy that I use. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into some hitters. The number one thing I look at is contact versus both handedness facing pitchers. And then the number two thing I look at is vision uh, and three speed and fielding. I think it's important to have uh, solid balance players that have uh, really good contact. For example, Tony Gwynn is probably the best hitter in this game. He has four categories that are maxed out in 125. He's going to get harder exit velocities with runners in scoring position with that 125 clutch. He has a maxed out 125 vision and contact versus both which is going to play extremely well in the harder difficulties. I was using this uh, diamond uh, special edition diamond Tony Gwynn instead until I got that Tony Gwynn card. I, the only thing that's different is he doesn't have the speed and fielding, which is something that I wasn't really too concerned about. Another really good card is this Frank Thomas. These two guys are probably the must have players. The first two guys that I would try to go for along with probably Joe Morgan, Joe Morgan or Duke Snyder. And then finally Brooks Robinson last. I think that's probably the route that I'm going to end up taking with the XP reward path. But Kenny Lofton is another card that fits the meta perfectly on the harder difficulties in this year's game. Ever since I picked this card up, he's been really effective for me. However, I am probably going to take him out because of that arm strength. I'm going to go with Ichiro out there. He's a better overall defender. Uh, Lindor is another card I want to include in this video because he goes along with that Kenny Lofton. He's a very usable card as well as this Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez doesn't really have the fielding that Lindor has, but when he plays up on inside edge, he is in the mid 80s when it comes to contact and power facing righties or sometimes even lefties. So definitely a good card to have as well as this Jose Reyes. I think that this card's the best team affinity card to use on the harder difficulties. And I think that Kenny Lofton is the best team collection to collect along with that Jose Ramirez and uh, Francisco Lindor. Ty Cobb is another card that I've really liked off the bench as a pinch hitter. He doesn't really have the best fielding. He does have a bronze badge out there in the outfield, even though it does say common there. That's his overall fielding. He does have the bronze fielding, plays similar to that special edition diamond, Tony Gwynn. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero is another card that I really like. Has 91 vision, good contact versus both, and solid power versus lefties. Um, Acuna is a little bit more of a budget left fielder. He might be due for an upgrade to diamond pretty soon here with an upgrade in fielding. I don't know if he's going to get it, but that's kind of where I'm, what I'm thinking. He's definitely a good card all around. Same type of thing here with Trevor Story. If you don't really have uh, Jose Reyes or Lindor or Jose Ramirez, then Trevor Story is probably your guy for middle infield. He does play a variety of positions fairly well. This Ken Griffey Sr. is another really good card that I used as a budget player. 84 overall gold. He has a 70 fielding, but with the speed, he plays a little bit better out there in the outfield. He has solid contact, a little bit of reverse splits. If I wasn't using my creative player at catcher, I would be using this Jason Kendall, most likely. When I'm on the Hall of Fame or Legend difficulty, this card is solid all around. Same thing with this Chipper Jones. The only thing he lacks is fielding. Uh, he does have solid contact versus both sides, and his swing is really nice. Being a switch hitter, he's definitely effective. Another really good card that recently got an upgrade is George Springer. This is a card I would use as a budget player, most likely off the bench, just because the fielding is a little low. 
but he does have 70 speed i was using him in the event and he is very effective i would use that card on hall of fame difficulty maybe not legend but hall of fame and then the last card i wanted to include is this ben zobris he just brings a nice value to your team and a utility player that's a switch hitter that hits both sides of the plate pretty well decent contact decent vision and good power for both thank you guys so much for watching this is my best players to use on hall of fame i'm college lefty and peace out